Welcome back, uh, dear viewers. Now it's time for our daily press review, and we are joined here in the studio with Ms. Sarah Haini Shaker, Assistant Lecturer, Political Science Department at a private university. And uh, good morning, first. Thank you very much for having me. <laughs> Thank you, Sarah. And first, uh, we start with the Al-Yom Seva newspaper, and we read the following headline. President of Fatah Sisi congratulates Egyptian people on Ramadan. President Fatah Sisi congratulated on Monday the Egyptian people with the holy month of Ramadan. The president exchanged congratulatory messages with the presidents and kings of Arab and Islamic countries on the occasion of the holy month of Ramadan. Also on Monday, President Sisi met with Minister of Defense Lieutenant General Sidqui Subhi. The meeting tackled the latest developments on the security and military levels, especially the anti-terrorism efforts and securing the Egyptian borders. The Defense Minister reviewed the results of his visit to France, in which the helicopter carrier Gamal Abdel Nasser was delivered to Egypt. Sobhi pointed out that he held fruitful talks with his French counterpart and exchanged points of views on the latest developments in the region. Also on Monday, President Afateh Sisi met with Prime Minister Sharif Ismail and Minister of Electricity Mohammed Shukri, Mohammed Shaker. Uh, during the meeting, the Electricity Minister reviewed the results of his recent visit to Russia in which he met with senior officials to discuss the latest developments in the establishment of the nuclear plant in Dama. So, um, First, uh, let's focus on Egyptian-French uh, military cooperation at this stage. How do you see it? I think it's a very important step to start this cooperation, especially after mm. the recent incident of the plane that has, yes. been, that has been actually uh, collapsing and devast uh, devastated. In, and lots of Egyptians were actually very sad about the loss of their families, and I'd like to pay their condolences to the families. So I think this is a very important step to make sure that the foreign relations between Egypt and France is not affected by any means and the fact that we need to start a good yes. military and economic cooperation as well between France and Egypt. And concerning uh, the nuclear plant uh, in Daba, uh, uh, how, to what extent it will benefit Egypt in the field of power? I think it's a very important step. However, what I'm very interested to know about is how this is going to affect uh, the nuclear agreement as well that yes. has been coming around. That there has been a recent conference, especially in Jordan, about it, especially the, nucle the nuclear arm agreement, especially that was going on with Iran. So I was wondering how the situation with, with Egypt is going to be, especially with the nuclear plant in Daba. And I'm actually very curious to know whether the U.S. is going actually to allow it or not. Okay. And uh, moving uh, to... Al Nail News, and we read the following headline: the Prime Minister forms a committee to follow up uh, government projects. Minister, Prime Minister Sharif Ismail issued on Monday a decision to form a committee to follow up work progress of various uh, government projects. The committee includes an assistant for each of the ministers of Health, Housing, Youth and Sports, Irrigation, Education and Transport, who will be present as members of the committee. The committee will follow up ongoing projects for the sectors of housing, drinking, water and sanitation, education, roads, education, youth and sports across various governorates. The committee also will be tasked to present a detailed monthly report on the results of its work and the latest developments of government projects to the Prime Minister. Earlier on Monday, Ismail headed the Economic Group Ministerial Meeting. During the meeting, the Prime Minister discussed the markets, prices, files, and availability of basic commodities to citizens during the holy month of Ramadan. The Prime Minister said that the government is willing to provide citizens with commodities in reasonable prices. So let's first uh, focus on um, uh, the government's efforts to attract uh, more investments and to carry m out many mega projects. So what sort of this? Uh, I have to give credit to the government. There has been a, a recent project, especially they were trying to uh, enhance the situation of one of the slum areas in Cairo. It's mm. called Terat al Yes. And this is a very important project. They started to locate the people from Terat al to another city that's called Nahda. And this is a very, very important step whereby they are trying to mm. provide adequate housing to the, to the people living over the areas over there. However, I'm afraid to say that I'm one of the people who usually ride the ring road every single day. Yes. And I'm very sad to see the amount of uh, slums and uh, local neighborhoods that does not have access to electricity, to water, to decent housing, to any kind of uh, safety 
safety mm. as well. And the idea of the fact that it's crowded and surrounded by lots of cars around it and transportation, that it's not very environment friendly, it's yes. not a very good thing. So I urge the Egyptian government to start doing something about that. Okay, and uh, what about preparations for the holy month of Ramadan and uh, uh, the government's efforts to provide citizens with commodities in reasonable prices? I think everyone is recently talking yes. about the price of the chicken, yes. the, 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 the very high prices of yes. the chicken. Yes. I heard that uh, one kilo for chicken is about 75 Egyptian pounds, yes. which is very expensive for many of people who cannot afford. So I urge the government to try to reduce the amount of commodities yes and to try to support the idea of uh, small medium enterprises that actually help, that actually help people who actually, there are a number of women that I know have been involved in a number of uh, charitable organizations yes. and a number of them. And I know that there are a number of women who actually have like small farms and yes. small. So why don't we encourage this, this idea of small medium enterprises instead of importing every single thing that we need? Yes. Okay, uh, moving to Al-Akhbar newspaper, and uh, we read the following headline, Egypt condemns the terrorist attack in Jordan. Egypt condemned on Monday the terrorist attack that targeted Ka camp in Jordan, leaving five Jordanian intelligence agents dead. Foreign Ministry spokesman Councillor Ahmed Abu Zaid announced in a statement that Egypt will always support Jordan in its fight against terrorism that targets the country's stability and security. Abu Zaid expressed Egypt's condolences for the families of the victims and the Jordanian government. More about this terrorist attack in the following report. Egypt condemned the terrorist attacks that took place in Jordan on Monday and targeted an intelligence office in the Bekaa camp. Foreign Ministry spokesman Councillor Ahmed Abu Zaid offered Egypt's condolences to the Jordanian government and people asserting Egypt complete support to efforts exerted by the kingdom in combating terrorism. Earlier, a gunman killed five Jordanian intelligence agents in a daylight terrorist attack on their office in a Palestinian refugee camp north of the capital. A Jordanian government spokesman said security forces were investigating who was behind the terrorist attack. He said preliminary findings suggested the attack was carried out by a lone gunman who opened fire with an automatic weapon before escaping. The shooting happened as the team members were starting their shift. It was unclear whether the gunman was a resident president of the camp or an outsider. The Bekaa camp is 20 kilometers from central Oman and is the largest of the kingdom's 10 official Palestinian refugee camps. The five killed in the attack were buried later in the day. Okay. Now, uh, Ms. Sara, can uh, you tell us uh, how do you see this terrorist attack that took place in Jordan? I need to say that Jordan is one of the largest countries that hosts uh, refugee populations, yes. especially due to its location, particularly in the fact that it has borders with uh, Iraq, it has borders with Syria, it has borders with Palestine. And a lot of the refugees, a lot of people are fleeing these countries because of what's going on internally. Mm -hmm. So unfortunately, and with the rise of uh, terrorist organizations like Daesh, this is making Jordan a very, very a very vulnerable position for any kind of attacks that actually have. I attended a, a conference in Jordan a while ago and I remember we were attending a conference about security and then they stopped us at the airport telling us, why are you coming to Jordan? And one of my colleagues, she basically responded and said, and said uh, we're going to attend something about nuclear weapons. And then everyone in, this, in the airport starting to question us, why are you here? What are you doing? What kind of nationality yes. are you? So they are afraid, I have to say, they yes. are afraid with everything that's going on. Okay, and then moving to Al-Yom Seba newspaper, and we read the following headline, Egypt closes Rafah border crossing after four-day opening. The Rafah border crossing was closed early on Monday after it was opened for four days, during which hundreds of travelers 
crossed in both directions. Egyptian authorities decided to open the border crossing to allow travelers, students, patients and humanitarian cases to cross. The border crossing was opened upon instructions from President Afate Hassisi. Official source said that the border crossing was opened on Wednesday, Thursday, Saturday and Sunday, adding that it was closed at exactly 12 a.m. on Monday. The source said that on the last day it's opening. The border received 1,321 travelers, 1,101 arrived in Egypt and 220 left for the Gaza Strip. So um, how do you see this decision by Egyptian government to open uh, Gaza crossing, uh, Rafah border crossing for four days? I think it's acceptable during that yes. time. However, what I am afraid of, or what the Egyptian government is actually afraid of, of the idea of smuggling, especially yes. the smuggling of weapons, and they've been very afraid of this, especially during the past three years, we've been seeing mm. witnesses of a lot of incidents of smuggling weapons inside Sinai, yes. and the lots of murders, especially whether from the Egyptian army or from uh, civilians. Yes. So I think it's a very important step to open it for humanitarian reasons. Mm. But I don't think, uh, I think it should be controlled mm. with very, very important uh, enforce, uh, yes. with very important instructions on how to deal with people coming in and people coming outside and to make sure that all of these people are actually registered. And uh, moving to Al Ahram newspaper, and uh, we read the following headline Immigration Ministry reveals plans to create expatriates database. Minister of Immigration and Expatriates Nabila Makram said on Monday that the ministry needs to know more about the Egyptian communities in Africa and boost them in this important continent. She revealed plans to create an up-to-date database on the number of Egyptians abroad through registering all work permits of Egyptian working outside the country. Earlier during a meeting with the African Affairs Committee in the House of Representatives, the immigration minister said there is no updated database numbers of Egyptians abroad. The minister added that she has already begun coordinating with the Manpower Ministry to calculate the number of Egyptians outside the country. Makram also said that she has been in communication with several trade unions to count the number of its members who are abroad. So, um, to what extent is it important to create a database for Egyptian expatriates, and especially in the African continent? Uh, it's very important. To, to do that. First, I'd like to thank the minister for her efforts, especially with, with the Egyptians who have been working in Jordan due to the circumstances, yes. and she's to, to Jordan to solve the issue. And it's very important to do a database. However, yes. what's more important is the idea that they need to register and they need to take into consideration all the number of the illegal migrants, yes. the illegal migrants, whether in Africa or in Europe or the U.S., because this is usually where the problem comes from. And I have to urge the minister to try to collaborate with mm. organizations such as the International Organization of Migration. They have to collaborate as well with the UNHCR because they have a well-established database they can access to and yes. they can cooperate together in order to make sure that Egyptians, whether working uh, outside, outside Egypt, can, mm. actually, can actually be easy to access and can have the rights they are supposed to have. And still with Al Ahram newspaper, and we read Egypt rescues 31 migrants in the Mediterranean. Egypt's navy saved the 31 migrants on Monday and transported them to Alexandria after their boat capsized and sank in the Mediterranean. The boat, which was carrying 600 people of different nationalities, capsized. 420 kilometers northwest of Alexandria, nine bodies were also found in the sea. According to the UN, between 700 to 900 people died in the Mediterranean in their attempt to reach Europe in the last week in May, making it one of the worst and deadliest weeks in the current migrant crisis. So how can the international community collaborate to end the migrant crisis? First, they need to cooperate together I have to say, I've been yes. tr trying to do some research in Egypt, and sometimes material, like material that you need access to, is not very easy yes. to get. So sometimes there are a number of organizations, whether national or international, that actually su supports the idea mm. of collaboration, cooperation. However, sometimes we need transparency in some things, and this is not allowed for many times for security reasons. Yes. So I think what is important, it's, it's very sad that every single day we wake up on the news, like two days ago or one day ago we heard that uh, there was a shark 
in yes. one of the beaches uh, in, inside inside one of the beaches in Egypt, and that uh, a guy his leg was being yes. battered. So this is this is not acceptable. Mm. So if if we don't if we don't know how to deal with the basic human right and protect our own citizens, how are we going to protect even the refugees? Mm. So yes. there is the, the need of transparency and there is this need of trying to cope together in order to make sure that things, not every single day we wake up, someone is dead. Yes. Moving to Al Watan newspaper and we read Agricultural Ministry says 4.7 million tons of local wheat received. The Agriculture Ministry said on Monday that about 4 million and 711,000 tons of local wheat were received since the start of the harvest seasons beginning in mid-April. Minister of Agriculture Dr. Raisam Fayyad said in a statement on Monday that supply operations are still going on. The Agriculture Ministry reiterated that operation room in the Agriculture Ministry is following the delivery process to resolve any obstacles facing farmers for the success of the receipt of domestic wheat season and deliver as much as the local wheat. The Ministry said that the pace of procurement has accelerated since a decision to open additional storage space was made by the Cabinet. So how do you evaluate the Minister of Agriculture efforts to resolve obstacles facing farmers? It's not good, I have to say. Yes. It's not very good. Because usually what happens if, if there is a shortage, what yes. we do instead of training the farmers and in order to train them on, for instance, new machines or new techniques in order to farm better or in order to yes. green the plants better, usually what they do is that they import, they import the materials from outside to inside mm. of Cairo. So what yes. happens is that you have high levels of unemployment for the farmers. Yes. People start to leave the farms on the outskirts of Cairo and everyone starts to squeeze in into Cairo because everyone wants to have a job. Yes. So what happens is that the kind of wheat that you have is no longer produced and people need to eat. Yes, we need to improve the conditions of farmers. So and of course we need yes. to improve the conditions of the farmers and we need to, to educate them on how to improve, to mm. improve the, 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 for instance, the cotton, the wheat, the tomato, whatever kind of thing that they, impl they plant, we need to teach them and we need to educate them on how to do it. Yes. And even better, before in the 1930s and the 1940s, we used to export all of our vegetables to areas inside Europe yes. because it was one of the best qualities. Now, unfortunately, it's one of the yes. very poor qualities and no one buys it. Yeah. So we pay lots of money in trying to export it, but no one buys it. Yes. So we're in a constant of a budget deficit. Okay, Sarah Hain Shaker, Assistant Lecturer, Political Science Department at Private University. Thank you for being with us. Thank you very much for having me. Thank you. Now, uh, you viewers, uh, we'll go for a short break and uh, we'll resume the practice show, so stay tuned.